Programs often need to make decisions based on user input, by data input, by things that are going on in the program, and giving the computer a variety of actions to perform based on a variety of expected conditions is a fundamental programming technique used in all languages, not just in Rebel. Uh, for example, users may select something from a list and the computer may have to respond by doing something. If the user selects something different from a list, the computer may have to respond with something different. Um, you know, uh, other things the computer may, for example, watch for an amount of time that's passed and then save uh, data to the hard drive. Here's an example. Um, typically what happens in a situation like this, this is called doing a conditional operation. If something happens, uh, or if, if a certain situation exists, um, do a certain thing. And the way it works is uh, this first uh, conditional operation is called if. Um, that tells the interpreter, the rebel interpreter, to, to do something if something uh, exists. If the time now, this is the way we write, this is the way you get from the interpreter the current time, is greater than 12 o'clock, is later than 12 o'clock, and rebel will automatically know how to deal with times, money, that sort of thing. It's greater than 12 o'clock, then you do this block of actions, alert that it's afternoon. Um, and typically you'll, you'll see mathematical operators to, to um, define how to, how to um, judge these conditions. If something is equal to, if it's greater than, less than, or not equal to um, a certain condition. So we'll paste this in the interpreter. Um, if the time is after 12, um, it's going to alert us with an, an afternoon. Right now it's um, 9.41, so um, the computer didn't do anything. We can say, for example, here, I'm going to go back and change that. If the time is after 8, it alerted us with this afternoon. That really should be changed to um, it's after 8. Yeah. It says it's after 8. Um, here's another example. It gets some um, info from the user using, again, a request text. And this is a refinement for title, at which uh, puts in the, in the title bar of that request text a um, little GUI. Um, puts these words, how many calories have you eaten today? And you'll see that those words are surrounded, instead of by quotes, um, by braces. And those curly braces, um, uh, can enclose multi-line text uh, text data, multi-line strings. That's very important, really. You see that all over the place. The data returned from that request text is converted to an in integer just to make sure that it's treated as an integer by Rebel. It's another data type that Rebel understands. And then it's assigned uh, the word daily-calorie. Put that into Rebel, and it will get some calories from us. Uh, so I've eaten 3,000 calories today. Uh, and then we do a little conditional operation. If the daily calories is greater than 2,500, we're going to alert the user that they need to stop eating now. Um, since I already entered 3,000 as my daily calories, it's going to tell me I need to stop eating now. There are a variety of other types of uh, condi conditional operations. Um, one of the common ones, very often, computers have to decide between, do it, between doing one of two things. Um, and the way this works is uh, you use the word either. Um, you either do the first block or the second block based on the outcome of the condition. So here's an example. Um, if the time is greater than 8 p.m., you're going to do this. You're going to say it's time to get up. If it's not greater than 8 p.m., then we're going to do the second thing. Uh, alert that you can keep on sleeping. So let's see here. Copy that in. It is later than 8 o'clock, so it's going to say it's time to get up. So again, the way that either works is if the condition is true, then do the first thing. If it's not true, do the second thing.
there's a little variation that lets you set the time. Ask you what time you want to get up with the request text. Converts that to a time value and assigns it to the word wake up. Put that in. Alaska City 8. Converts that to a time value. And now it's going to do something. It's going to do the first thing if now time is later than the wake up time. It's going to say it's time to get up. And if it's not later than the time we've put in, it'll say you can keep on sleeping. Okay. We'll say it's time to get up. Uh, another really common uh, conditional structure is the switch structure. Switch l structure lets you choose between a, a number of different um, operations to do based on uh, a conditional evaluation. And the full syntax is actually called switch default, which lets us do a default block of code if none of the conditions exist. And the way it works is we, we choose a, a value that we want to compare to a number of other evaluations. Um, if the first or if the evaluation comes out uh, to uh, this value, then do this block of um, uh, code, block of functions. If the this value matches the main value, then do this block and so on. You can have as many blocks as you want. So here's an example. Again, we're going to get some text from the user. Press text. And we're going to assign that to the word favorite day. Um, so we'll say Monday is the favorite day. We're going to run through a whole bunch of evaluations. We're going to take that word, that assigned word now, favorite day, which now means Monday. And depending on what the user typed in, we're going to respond a certain way. If we typed in Monday, it's going to say Monday's the worst, uh, just the start of the week. And there's a variety of other things that the computer will respond to depending on what the user typed in. If they didn't type in anything, we're going to alert and say you didn't type in the name of the day. If we say pickle for the favorite day, it's going to say you didn't type in the name of the day. Take that and pop it in. We've already done our little Monday, so it's going to tell us Monday's the worst. It's the 